I've been working with Esri software for nearly 20 years, and I've worked on some great projects. I've programmed AML with the best of them, and I agonized learning Arc objects with the rest of them. Today, I'm excited to show you a new Python map scripting environment that isn't only easy to learn, very productive, but I think it caters nicely to the GIS analyst. Let me show you a few examples. On the screen, I have a map document that has nearly 100 layers, and all of those layers are directed to a personal GeoDatabase. Some of those layers have definition queries and label expressions, and obviously those field names are enclosed in square brackets. Well, since the data has been ported to a file GeoDatabase, and now I'd like to redirect all of these layers and point them to the new workspace. Available on the Beta Resource Center are many scripts that I've made available and published for you to download now. Jim Berry showed you some of them. To work with, to learn from, to modify, and hopefully share with others. Let me show you one of those. This script allows me to specify an input personal GeoDatabase, the output file GeoDatabase, the map document that I want to modify, and then I'm going to save the result out to a new map document. And optionally, I can have the script fix SQL queries. I'm going to select OK. This script will run through that map document and redirect those 100 or so layers. It'll automatically save the results out to a new map document. And then I'll have the script automatically open that resultant map document for us to evaluate the results. So you can see now that all of my layers are pointing to a file GeoDatabase. And if I go back down to that layer, we'll see that the definition query now has its field names enclosed in double quotes instead of square brackets. So let's take a look at this script. All I simply do is I import the ArcPy site package in an OS module. Then we simply have five variables that reference those five input parameters in that dialog. And we create a variable that references the map document in the path that we pass in. Then what we do on that map document, we replace its data sources. We replace the input personal GeoDatabase with the output file GeoDatabase. Then again, optionally, if we want to update our SQL expressions for every layer in that map document, if that layer supports a definition query, then we will simply replace the square bracket with double quotes. Likewise, if that layer supports label classes, we'll do the same thing. Then we simply save the map document out to a new file, and we have the operating system open up the result. Now, this is easy to write, easy to read, and I challenge any of you that work with Arc Objects to do it in fewer lines of code. Now, because the map scripting environment provides access to methods and properties for objects that are inside of a map document, we can not only use the scripting environment to modify and manipulate those objects, but we can also create scripts to report information about those map documents. So again, available on the Resource Center is another script that's available. You just simply need to browse to a folder that contains multiple map documents, and then simply specify the name of the text file you want to create. This script will rep report a whole bunch of information to a text file, but this is critical to data administrators that want to know how many map documents are, are out there, how many layers, how many data sources. Are any of those data sources broken? so they can make inf informed decisions about what to do with the data out there. So very briefly, we have our first object, a map document. We, we report things like, where is it stored out on disk? Does it have relative paths? Are there broken data sources? Then we simply move on to the next object, the data frame. We report things like spatial reference, scale, rotation. Then we just go on. We move through all the layers in that map document, in that data frame, until we get to the next map document. This map document has a total of six broken data sources. So again, these scripts can be used to identify problems with the system. And like the script I showed you earlier, we can run those to fix those problems. Let's take a real quick, quick look at that code. Now, there are more lines of code, obviously, because it's doing more things. But fundamentally, we're creating an output file. We're writing all that information out to the file. And then what we do is we iterate through all of the map documents in that folder. 
We isolate one map document at a time, and then we start reporting information, like who's the, you know, what is the summary, or does it have broken data sources? We write that out to a file. Then we work through every single data frame inside of that map document, and again, we report information to the file. We work with every layer in that map document specific to a data frame. Again, we report things like its data source and what its layer name is. We do the same thing for tables, but ultimately, we close the file and we open the result. So many of you may have written scripts like this in Arc Objects. I think you'll find it's much easier to do in this new coarser grain scripting environment. Now, the last application I want to show you, I think, really demonstrates the full capabilities of map automation. Clark County, Washington, has a public-facing website, and customers can order a variety of online products. Those products can be anything from digital data, digital atlases, thematic maps, etc. And those, all, all of those orders are completely automated behind the scenes and available for, for customer pickup the following day at the GIS counter. In an effort to make sure that ESRI was on target with the map scripting environment, ESRI's holistic testing team has worked with a variety of customers. I personally worked with Bob Poole, the Clark County's GIS manager, and his team to help them migrate their AML-based application into the new Python scripting environment. The developer packet, which is an application that they created with our assistance because they're part of the beta program, allows a customer to either enter in one or multiple parcels. And then, I'm sorry, the customer or the land developer would then go in and enter in the appropriate contact information. But ultimately, what they want to create is a multi-page report that not only shows spatial an analysis uh, statistical information, but it also shows a series of thematic maps that display the GIS layers in and around the parcels of interest so they can make informed decisions um, about the parcel they're about to develop. Now, in an effort to save some time, I'm simply going to open the result because the actual script takes several minutes to run. But what you'll see is we've created a multi-page PDF report. And fundamentally, we create one page at a time, export it out to a PDF, and then append that result to the next page. So we have multiple pages, we have basic maps, and we also have a very detailed property information sheet in which spatial analysis is used, and there are about 30 GIS overlays taking a variety of GIS layers and overlaying them with those parcels so we can learn, you know, how many, um, what are the soil types, or what's the slope, or what's the zoning, or, or school district. And then fundamentally, we have a single map template, and programmatically, we add and remove layers and update um, the legend to create the map of interest. And again, it's just creating one result and appending the result to the final uh, multi-page PDF. Clark County considered doing this a while ago um, with Arc Objects, but the cost of investment was just too high. Being part of the beta program, they quickly realized the ease in which this could be scripted. So again, we got them going, and they completed the project, and this is actually something that they've developed. Um, another thing that's really nice about doing it in this new scripting environment is that these are geoprocessing scripts, and these scripts could be um, served as geoprocessing servers services on top of ArcGIS server. So in summary, I just want to emphasize the ease in which the new Python map scripting environment can be um, dealt with. And again, it's really intended for the GIS analyst. It's not a replacement for Arc objects, but rather a coarser grained scripting environment um, uh, to do basic map automation and data management tasks. If you're interested in seeing any more, please come see us later on this afternoon. Thank you, Ewan. Thanks, Jeff. So some really nice examples there. A couple of fairly simple ones at the start, but then these simple examples can be really, there's no uh, limitation. They can grow into a real-world solution, automating the workflow for a number of products, map-based products, et cetera, that Jeff showed. And I can't uh, underestimate the importance of participating in the beta program. 
The beta program helps us test the software. It helps us validate that we've got the design right. And it helps you adopt the technology quickly. So I encourage you all, if you're not already in the beta program, get into it, get hold of the pre-release software so you can start to adopt this new technology as quickly as possible.